I'm Tony Hagen, Senior Editor with the Center for Biosimilars. We spoke with Mr. byung Sho Choi, Head of Marketing for Celtrion Healthcare, about the company's work with biosimilars. In this part of the interview, we discussed the drug candidates that Celtrion has in the pipeline to accomplish its ambitious goal to launch one new biosimilar each year through 2030. We also discussed the company's emphasis on product differentiation, the competitive landscape, and Celtrion's goal to open a biosimilar manufacturing facility in Wuhan, China. Tell us about your uh, near-term pipeline to accomplish these objectives. What types of uh, uh, biosimilars do you have uh, coming down the pike? Hmm. Yeah, as you already know, the, the first one is the Ramsham SSD. The following the EU marketing authorization for Ramsham SSD for the treatment of people with rheumatoid arthritis issued in November last year, Chen, the Committee for Medicinal Product for Human Use of the EMA, has recommended expanding the existing marketing authorization in additional five indications for the treatment of people with ankylosing spondylitis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, psoriatic arthritis, and psoriasis. Generally, the issue cut gives final approval within three months after the chance opinion. In the United States, Celtium plans to go through the new drug pathway in order to receive U.S. FDA approval by 2022. Uh, the second one is uh, CTP-17. Uh, Sertrin has applied for the EMA's commercialization approval of CTP-17, a humira biosimilar, in March this year. We expect that we can launch the product in the UN mar EU market once authorization is granted from the EMA next year. We have submitted clinical data based on the all indications approved for Humira, including rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, and psoriasis. CTP-17 will be the first high concentration type of medicine for a biosimilar made of odalimumab. CTP-17 could be more convenient for patient by potentially reducing the injection volume. The drug is citrate free, meaning it causes less pain upon injection. The third one is CPP-16. Sertrion carried out phase three clinical trials of Genentex Abastin biosimilar for metastatic colorectal cancer metastatic breast cancer and non-small cell lung cancer indications, and complete recruitment of patients. Sertrion successfully completed the phase one clinical trial study on the safety and pharmacokinetic assessment of CTP-16 in June 2018. Beginning with protocol, Sertrion is set to conduct a Phase three clinical trial for CTP-16 in about 150 sites in some 20 nations across Europe, Asia, and South Africa, America. Sertrion plans to apply for European submission next year. The last one is CTP-39. Sertrion also plans to develop Novartis asthma and rest treatment Jolair biosimilar. Sertrion is carrying out phase one and three clinical trials of the CTP-39 and anticipated to complete the trial by 2022. Besides this, we have a lot of pipelines and are currently in research, uh, research and development. So uh, product differentiation, you've, uh, you've worked to make your products stand out a little bit different from uh, other um, other uh, drugs on the market. Uh, can you talk about uh, uh, CTP-117 a little bit more um, and um, how you expect this, this edge will help you out? Uh, CTP-17 is a high concentration formulation, as I told. 
uh, and could be more convenient option for patient by potentially reducing the injection volume. CTP-17 will be a citrate-free formulation, which can reduce the pain of the injection. Sertino plans to, plans to optimize method of uh, administration and regimen by offering various strengths. In terms of portfolio strategies, CTP-17 can be used as a sequential treatment with the CTP-13 SC so that patient can use a drug in terms of achieving a long-term drug survival. Okay. Um, and um, Abvi is uh, working to um, bring uh, follow-on products such as Skyrizi and also um, Rinvoc to, to market. Um, uh, these might uh, dilute the market for uh, adalimumab. Uh, how do you... How do you um, anticipate that might affect your sales plans? Uh, yeah, there is no doubt that AppB is trying to strengthen, strengthen its product competitiveness by adopting different strategies. We plan to close monitor the recurrent dyna dynamics of the market, including the new entrant strategies and the market penetration strategies of our competitors. Okay, um, and um, will you be bringing CTP-117 to the market in the United States? Uh, and do you have an application in already with the FDA? Of course. Central plans to submit application to the US FDA as the uh, patent for Humira will expire in 2023 in the United States. Um, in 2023, in the United States, Humira faces possible competition from at least five biosimilars from five makers, including the Saturn scale. Okay. Um, Remsina SC is uh, another form of product differentiation, subcutaneous. Uh, please, can you talk about your strategy with this product, uh, which has been successful in Europe so far? Uh, Impression is an IV anti TNF alpha therapy in which its safety and efficacy are supported by nearly 20 years of real world experience. Impression has well established the clinical profiles for the treatment of autoimmune indications such as rheumatoid arthritis, whilst it is proven to be comparatively effective in treating IBD compared to other biologics. And for each rapid onset of response, there has been a need of improved convenience, convenience feature to its formulation. Sertron expects that the Remshima SEC will be the first and only subcutaneous Impushima to be available in Europe, offering patients who are starting on sweet or switching anti TNF alpha therapy with a proven benefit of Imprishma in a more convenient form. Remshima SC will offer a stable potency and a lower immunogenicity compared to the IV formulation, as well as increased flexibility and convenience throughout self administration. Also, features will have more flexibility or, or more tailored approach when it comes to deciding whether a patient should receive Ramshima IV or SC according to its individual patient condition or a disease state. For, for instance, an IV formulation could be used to induce a rapid response in patient, while SC can be utilized to maintain a better drug survival rate. The flexibility, uh, this, press, uh, this uh, flexibility allows physicians to make the option uh, optimal choice uh, for their patient. Okay. Um, and um, biosimilars and bioinnovatives. How do you how do you separate those? Uh, how do you you've you've talked about uh, both types of uh, products. 
Mm. Yeah, the postology and the root of administration of CTP-13 SEC is different from CTP-13 IV. So Celtrion has filed its application to the EMA as a line extension application. Therefore, the concept of a bioinnovative applies to CTP-13 SEC in Europe. However, in the United States, Celtrion plans to go through a new drug pathway. Celtrion believes the regulatory environment is accommodating innovation in biosimilars and that regulations relating to biosimilars should promote innovative research into high quality new medicine. If approved, the CTP-13 SEC would be the world first subcutaneous version of Improxima, expanding treatment option for patients and patients. Okay. Um, let's, let's talk about your uh, Wuhan factory, if, if you will. Uh, uh, can, you, can you tell us um, what, the, um, what the conditions are for getting started with the construction right now? You have uh, uh, the coronavirus may have uh, abated somewhat in that, in that area. Uh, what does this mean for Celtrion? Mm. Yeah, one project is still on hold due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is difficult to say how its ongoing outbreak will affect our plans at this moment. We are cross-monitoring the situation and will continue to communicate with officials of Hubei province in China. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to put the factory in China and uh, what your long-term goal is for that market? Yeah, as you know, that the, the China is the one of the most difficult to, countries to enter the market. So we have to decide that Sergio planned to build a facility in Wuhan targeting China's domestic market including R&D and CMO and the production in a longer term. Um, and one more uh, is that uh, we can believe, uh, we believe that uh, we can save the uh, cost of goods uh, of development biosimilar as uh, in the future, it is very helpful for us expanding our target market. All right, well, um, it's, uh, is there any other, uh... Uh, development that, that you'd like to mention about Celtrion's activities right now? Yeah, Celtrion plans to develop high quality biosimilars for various biologics. We plan to launch either a, bio, a monoclonal antibody biosimilar or a new drug every year so as to enrich our product portfolio. This will include biosimilar, bioinnovatives, and new drugs. We have also signed an agreement to acquire product asset for the Asian Pacific region from Dakeda, a Japanese bio uh, pharmaceutical company, in an effort to strengthen its R&D capabilities in global small molecule drug sector. We expect this acquisition will allow the company to mature as a comprehensive global pharmaceutical company as it adds a powerful small molecule product lineup uh, to its already strong biopharmaceutical pipeline, which include autoimmune disease and anti-cancer drugs. 